So Byzantine agreement is an important problem to address in a distributed network. It is all about being tolerant of the nodes that are malicious in nature, which means that they are corrupt and are trying to ruin the sanity, integrity and correctness of the network. Right? In this video, we talk about an algorithm that gathers an exponential amount of information to build a robust understanding of different values proposed by different nodes. Once we have this information, we reach a consensus such that even if there are a few nodes who are malicious in nature, who sent random values to us, we would still be reaching the correct consensus. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focus group of 50, 60 engineers, every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many, many, many more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack, to designing our own toy load balancer, to Crickbuzz's live text commentary, to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. So reaching consensus is extremely important in a distributed network. Say we have a database cluster in which one node thinks the value of price is $1,000 while the other node thinks the value of price is $2,000. Now, depending on where the request goes, we either work with $1,000 or $2,000. This gives a very inconsistent view to our clients. Right? This is where the nodes needs to talk to, needs to talk to each other and come to a consensus key what the value of price is, either $1,000 or $2,000. This is the problem of distributed consensus. Right? Now, we assumed, up until now, we always assumed that the nodes are genuinely, they are all genuine nodes, which means that the value that they are claiming, they may be lagging in time, they may be slow, they may have crashed, they may have some corruption, something, right? But they are all genuine in nature. What Byzantine's agreement says is that, let's say a node is malicious in nature, which means that node is deliberately trying to ruin the correctness of the system. So no matter what the nodes is deliberately trying to say, you know, the value is 5000, random number. Right? And if node is trying to do that, how can we reach a consensus even in the presence of such nodes in the distributed network? This is where we talk about an algorithm called exponential information gathering algorithm, EIG algorithm to solve this part. Now EIG algorithm works on a data structure called EIG data structure. The idea is to gather exponential amount of information so that we can reach the correct consensus or we can reach the proper consensus that we should, right? EIG data structure is a tree that grows exponentially, right? This tree is constructed level by level. The construction procedure, I've talked about it in the previous video. I would highly recommend you to check that out, right? But here I'll just cover a pretty much gist of it, right? So because this tree is cover is basically constructed level by level. At each level, we would have all possible permutations of length k. So at level k, we would have all possible permutations of length k of all the nodes in the system. So for example, if I have nodes a, b and c in the network, then and if I'm constructing a three level deep EIG tree, 
So at the leaf of EIG tree, what I would have is I would have all possible permutations of A, B and C. It would be A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B. Now, the idea of this construction is pretty simple. That my root node is labeled as an empty string. Then I have the children of it is A, B and C. Then A's children, like root node had three children. Then A, this worst level children would have two children. And then only one child, right? So A will have two children, A, B and A, C. B will have two children, B, A and B, C. C will have two children, C, A and C, B. Now A, B will have one child, A, B, C. A, C will have one child, A, C, B and so on and so forth. This way, we would be covering the entire permutation range of length k at the after, at the, at the level k in my EIG tree. Right. This is the exponential information that will be gathering across the network. Right. Okay. Now the algorithm. Now here the algorithm that we'll be talking about is how we would be achieve, how would we would be solving the Byzantine's agreement problem. Okay. So here the EIG tree is not central tree. Every node in the distributed network is sending information to every other node such that every node eventually will have the exact same EIG tree, right? Now, the algorithm with we will be discussing will be tolerant to F faulty processes, which means that at max F processes can be, uh, F processes can be malicious or they are trying to deliberately ruin the sanity of the system, right? So, we are, will be making tolerant to F processes at max. This algorithm would work when the number of nodes are greater than three times f, which means if I am tolerant to one faulty process, I need at least three nodes or at least four nodes rather for my algorithm to work, which means that the number of nodes are much larger than the number of faulty processes that I may have in my system, right? Okay. So now when a process sends ill-formed information, maybe some junk, maybe some garbage value to other nodes participating in the consensus, the consensus should not be prone to that. This is the problem statement. Right? Now the flow here would be pretty simple. The process propagates the value for F plus 1 routes. And each processor node builds its own EIG tree. Right? The idea is pretty simple. So every node is constructing its own EIG tree independently for F plus 1 levels and the value it receives will be put into that corresponding path. It's like a try. It would be put into that corresponding path and then eventually the judgment would be made. Again, construction is covered in the previous video. I would highly recommend you to check that out. The idea is pretty simple. Sending the value to the nodes of the path at n minus 1 at uh, k minus 1 level such that you are not in that path. It basically covers the permutation. Right. Okay. Now, while exchanging this information, right, because at every round, every node will send its information to every other node of the previous level, right. So, if a node receives a garbage value, the node ignores it. For example, I say that the value should be an integer, but if I receive a string, say A, I would be discarding it and putting it as a null in the tree, right. If a value should be in range, let's say 0 to 100 and I received 5000. So this is a very basic sanity check that you are making that if a node is because a malicious node might not know the correct value or the or the possible value of that particular variable or that particular key, it might send some garbage. So just as a very basic sanity check, if a random value is received, you throw it out. Right. Once the entire EIG is constructed, now it's time to make that decision. So while the EIG tree is being constructed, every node sends value to every other node. When that happens, eventually you would have this entire tree filled with values that you received across multiple communication paths. And now it's time to make that decision. Now, because you know that there will be few faulty processes who are malicious in nature, you are trying to be tolerant to that. So, how will you make this decision? To be fault tolerant or to be, sorry, not fault tolerant, to be tolerant to malicious users, your decision process would happen ground up, right? Which means that all the leaf node would send its value to the node above. The node above will pick the majority of the value that it saw in the children, right? 
so for example if the node a uh, sorry if the node ab has one child abc so abc will send its value to ab right so ab because it only has one child it would be getting the that would become automatically become the majority and ab would accept that particular value now ab what it would do is every node would see the value that it got at its base oh sorry at its children immediate children from that immediate children it would be propagating it up the level now for a non leaf node the value is equal to the majority of values of its children so if there is a clear cut majority then your final value of that particular level is equal to the majority that has just been formed right in case you cannot form majority let's say you have two child or oh sorry two children and you receive two different values of that let's say 1000 and 2000 so you cannot form a majority so that's when you would resort to a default value that you were not able to make that decision and that default value would be propagated up right eventually you can very clearly see that if one of if there are few nodes that are corrupt in my uh, if there are few nodes that are corrupt what would happen is only some parts would be affected not the entire tree that's why it was in, that why that's why it was important to gather exponential amount of information so that the fewer malicious users can corrupt only a small subset of path while most of the path would remain same in my particular tree now the final value the final consensus that you would form would be the one that would be formed at the root node right the root node when it's going ground up ground up ground up it's like basically post order travel not really post order but basically bottom up traversal the value the final value that would be getting at the root node will be the one that will be forming the consensus because every node has the same exact eig tree constructed independently they would all be coming up with the same value right and this is how you become tolerant to one of the a few faulty nodes or few corrupt nodes few malicious nodes in your network right the final consensus would be the one that is converged at the root level if no faulty nodes there are no corrupt nodes all nodes would converge to the same majority value for a few corrupt nodes sending few corrupt values here and there will be absorbed and will not be propagated up that's why your root will be will be tolerant to any or to a few malicious user in your network but if you have large number of malicious user in your network then you are gone and that's what happens with the 51% attack that you might have heard of right so uh, so long as there are few faulty net uh, few faulty nodes in your network you are still tolerant enough but as soon as it becomes or uh, they have the majority they would ruin your entire network right and this is the idea to become tolerant to byzantine's agreement right so that even if the fault tolerant nodes or even if there are malicious nodes you are still have a working system right and that's it that's it for this video if you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub i post three in depth engineering videos every week and i'll see you in the next one thanks a lot